Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment breakdown on the 2023 Ford Escape and its SYNC 4 infotainment system. In this video, we're going to check out how the gauge cluster works, how the infotainment screen works, take a look at Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, show you how to pair up a phone, and test out the voice commands. Now, as always, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll try to get to them retroactively, and we'll throw a few chapters to let you get yourself through the video. But before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. Redesigned for 2023, the Ford Escape coming in many different trims. And admittedly, it can be a bit confusing because ST lines are not all built the same. There's ST line, ST line uh, Sport maybe or something or other. And then there's this XT line Elite. And then there's the hybrids and the non-hybrids. But we're going to try to break that down all for you and uh, make it a little less confusing. So if you do want to see more on the Escape, check the link below. We've got a sound system demo, full review, fuel economy tests. You can find that all on the link below. This model we're in, the Top Dog ST Line Elite Hybrid, has a 13.2 inch screen over here and a 12.3 inch screen right in front of us. So let's start in front. Pretty high resolutions, looking nice, showing us a good amount of info. On the left side there, you have not a standard tachometer, but more of a power level screen. So as you get driving, it's going to show you essentially what percentage of total power output you're using of the powertrain. And then when you're slowing down, it's going to show you how much you're regenerating back into the battery pack. On the bottom left, you've got your compass. And then moving across the bottom, you've got engine coolant temperature, your odometer that goes all the way to the tenths place. It's interesting how Ford does that. Your gear selector in the middle, as well as an indication of the car and any of the safety systems that are working around it. So if we were following a vehicle in front of us with the adaptive cruise control, we'd see it show up there. Continuing to the right, we see a speed limit sign. That's nice to have, and it actually pulsates at you a little bit as you come up to new speed limits. Below that, your distance to empty. Moving over to the right, your gauge for how much fuel you got left in the car, and then bottom right, your outside temperature right there. Moving up, you have a digital speedometer and then an analog speedometer, just for visual effect. And in the middle, a customizable display. There are a lot of different options you can have for it, and you select them with this right area of the steering wheel. Let's hit menu and start off in the main menu here. On the top, you're gonna to see my view and you can customize that right here with my view to show what different screens you'd like to have shown in the my view. There's a lot of different options. You're gonna to need to choose them and kind of go through and see which ones you use most often. But let's go down through and I think we're gonna see most of them in the trip and energy vehicle maintenance and status information screen. So under trip and energy, start at the top, you've got a breakdown for trip one and trip two. It's gonna show you how long you've been in those trip modes, driving the car, and then in the center, your average fuel economy, and on the right, how many miles you've traveled, and below that, how many miles were electric that you've traveled, that's kinda of cool. Coming down, you see the same information for trip two, and then this trip, this is since you've started up the vehicle, so you can see I've been idling for 13 minutes, but I have not driven anywhere. Below that, just showing you your fuel economy, I don't know if that's total since the vehicles existed, or, uh, what that since when that's been readjusted? I guess that's for your trip two, it looks like, and then it also shows you if you're doing electric driving or not. Below that, eco behavior kind of gives you a, a percentage score for how well you've been driving economically, and then an EV coach as you're driving. This is going to show you if you're in electric mode and uh, hybrid mode, and then as you're braking, how efficiently you're braking. Heading back. Oh, sorry, you can't go back, you have to hit menu, then you go down to status information, you can see which wheels are getting power sent to them with the all-wheel drive system, and you can see which seatbelts are fastened in the vehicle. Going back to vehicle maintenance, you can see your tire pressure in PSI, and also under vehicle maintenance, your oil life remaining, and you'd hold this to reset it if you changed your own oil, or maybe the place you brought it forgot to do that for you. Through this main menu, you can also control a lot of different elements that you can also get to in the center screen. So you can control which audio you're listening to, all your different inputs there. You can go to different navigation waypoints, maybe your favorites or previous destinations, or if you have your home address set in there, you can do that. Below that, for phone, you can go to your incoming calls, outgoing calls, missed calls, interestingly not your contacts, interesting enough. Under settings, you can change different display settings. So switch the speedo over to kilometers per hour, turn on or off your turn by turn indication. I feel like you'd want that on. You have two different gauge styles as well. You can switch over to modern. I think that makes a little bit more sense for most people driving the Escape here because you get a bigger digital speed readout and 
uh, a less conventional analog tachometer there. So we're gonna leave it in modern for now. Eco Coach, you can have that visible there or uh, just have it visible when you're driving in eco mode. Hmm, I guess we'll leave that on, see how that is. And then a braking coach as well. So as you come up to a stop, it'll pop up and show you how efficiently you braked. Under vehicle settings, if you need to tow the vehicle behind something like a camper, this is where you'd engage that neutral tow. Now, mind you, that is an option, I believe, so you might not have that in there. Lastly, under the main menu, you've got settings for your head-up display. That's got this janky little glass-mounted head-up display. I don't know why Ford put that in to a vehicle here in 2023, but you can turn it off, have it slowly make its way back down, or eventually turn it back on and you can make some adjustments there on where it's showing you your speed and what content is available inside it. Oh, I don't know why it turned itself back off. It's a pretty jank display. I don't know, again, it's, it's not befitting for a $44,000 car. Making our way to the center screen. As I said, this is a 13.2 inch screen running Sync 4. Now Sync 4 on this horizontal layout has, man, the head up display is just no longer working. <laughs> Sync 4 in this horizontal layout has come a little ways in being a little less uh, visually busy, but that's my biggest complaint with it is there's a lot going on and not a lot of different contrast breaking up the screen. It takes a long time of using the system to get acclimated with it. Another thing I don't care for is all the climate controls here are built into the screen. There's virtually nothing you can do down here. You can technically turn on your max defrost, but that is it. And that's frustrating because just earlier today, I was driving around and the entire screen froze up. So it was 80 degrees outside and I was trying to turn my air conditioning on and I, none of the climate control would work. So I actually had to stop and turn the car off, turn it back on just in order to activate my climate control. And that's frustrating. I, I don't think a lot of people are gonna appreciate that. But it is there and fortunately it stays up regardless of what screen you're in. If you bring your navigation full screen, you're still getting your climate. It's always there but it's just a clear way of Ford cheaping out, especially when there is a space down here that they could have done some more physical controls. This is what your home screen looks like. So you see we've got some mapping going, we've got what media is playing right here, phone status, and then some screens over on the side for settings, features, and applications. Along the top, you see a clock, you see your phone uh, signal status, a quick toggle to get to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which I appreciate, and then your temperature all the way over on the right. Let's start by taking a look at the map and bringing it full screen. I do have to say Ford's got a really nice navigation in here. It's very quick to respond to pinching and zooming and moving around. I've appreciated having it up and around because a lot of times you use the built-in navigation not necessarily for navigating, but you use it just to see which roads around you. You use it almost more like a map. So you can, for example, switch the map orientation and make it 2D north up, and then it's really gonna look more like just driving around with a map up on your screen. I think people are gonna appreciate that. Over on the side is how you're going to put in different routes and choose what things you might wanna see on the map or things you might wanna avoid like highways, toll roads, <laughs> tunnels, etc. Overall, it is a decent navigation system to use. I don't know if we have live traffic. Oh, traffic on map right there. So maybe if you pay for it monthly, you can get live traffic readouts on there but don't have it right now. So if you are going to use your navigation regularly, I re highly recommend spend some time, play around with it and get familiar. Heading back to the home screen, let's take a look at media. Now, of course we do have our full in, uh, sound system breakdown on the car linked below, but just to show you what your media screen looks like here, I do appreciate that they give you quick inputs to get to your different sources, as well as your sound adjustments. And everything on the screen is a nice, large, easy to click and easy to see button. So I do think they did a good job designing that. Heading back home, going below, this is your phone screen. Now, right now it's gonna show us our Android Auto that we have connected, and I don't think there's a way to just view our phone menu while Android Auto is connected. So let's turn off Android Auto real fast so you can just see how it would look if you had a phone paired via Bluetooth but not paired for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There we are, so if we have Android Auto disabled, this is going to be your phone screen. You're gonna be able to view your contacts nice and easy right from there. You're going to even be able to type in and, and bring up a certain contact, for example. You can go back and view which phones are paired up to the screen, and you can dial things in right there, the keypad, pretty easily. And you can get to your text messages. 
heading home. We, I guess we'll make it up to, let's go to the top right. Let's go through settings. Now we're not gonna dive into every single detailed setting here in the car, but we'll just go through some of the more important stuff. Again, phone list right here. If you do need to connect to a different phone, that's how you're going to do so. And you can choose which things you're using the phone for. You also got some phone settings right in there. You can adjust things like, oh, what do we see? Manage your contacts, change your ringtone for your phone. A few different settings for roaming and low battery notifications. Continuing on to the right, we have sync navigation settings. These are going to be the same map settings that we saw earlier. Sound is interestingly grayed out. Maybe that's because nothing's playing. Yes. If you got something playing, then it gives you your sound screen. You can adjust your tone, treble, mid range, and bass, etc. On vehicle settings, you have a setting for 30 minute max idle. So, like right now, when we're just idling the car, if I sat here for 30 minutes, it would turn the vehicle off. Rear occupant alert, this is coming on uh, standard. It's trying to prevent kids from getting left in hot cars in the back, being forgotten there. If you're someone who never travels with children, you're welcome to turn that off. Easy entry and exit right now, as this is set with seat adjustment on, when I turn the car off, it's going to move the seat back and make it easier to get in and out of, you know, but some people don't like that, so they can turn that off. Whoops, there we go. Huh, okay. Remote start setup, what do you want to turn on when you remote start the car and how long do you want it to stay on for? If you want your rain sensing wipers on or off, you can enable that there under wipers. Power lift gate, if for some reason you didn't want the power lift gate to work, you could turn that off. Lighting, auto high beams, that's set to on right now and it doesn't look like there's a way to turn that off via a button, so if that's annoying you, you're gonna have to turn that off here on the screen. Same with your daytime running lamps. I don't know why you'd want those off, but if you wanted a night ride, you could turn those off from there as well. Under ambient lighting, this is how you're going to turn the ambient lighting on and off in the car. I don't think we have any colors to choose from. It's simply white lighting that lights up the cabin. Under locks, if you wanted the car to uh, let you know, kind of honk when you double lock the, the from the key fob there, you do that. Also, when you press the unlock button on the key fob, if you want just the driver's door or all the doors to unlock, you're gonna take care of that there as well. And door keypad code. One of my favorite things in Fords is having the five digit keypad code on the outside of the car. This is how you're going to set your custom keypad code. You gotta know the factory code, which probably came to you in your glove box from the dealership, and then slot that in there, and you can set a custom one. Continuing on down here, clock settings. This is how you're going to change your clock. If you wanted to maybe have it a few minutes fast to get you to your places a little bit quicker, you could do that. Or you can simply choose auto time update and the car will set the clock for you regardless of daylight savings time or time zone. Also, if you're someone who wants a 24 hour clock, you can choose that right there. General settings, you're gonna be able to change your language between English, French, and Spanish. Temperature units, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Measurement units, miles and miles per gallon, kilometers and liters per 100 kilometers, or kilometers and kilometers per liter. Lastly, you've got tire pressure units. You can choose between PSI, KPA, and bar. Right here, your touch button beep. If you don't want the screen to beep like it has been as we've been clicking things, you can turn it off right there. We're gonna leave that off for the rest of the test. And lastly, you can reset everything to your factory defaults there at the bottom under reset. Continuing on under display, you can turn on a calm screen. If you're just driving along, you don't want all that visual busyness in the middle there, you can choose calm screen and you simply see the date and time. Some people are gonna appreciate that. Brightness for the screen, I always forget to turn this all the way up before we start filming. Oh, just kidding, it is all the way up even though it's only halfway through the slider. Why does Ford do this? I guess it's not the only brand that does it, but it's just kind of funny to me that this is dim and then halfway up is the max you can go. Then different modes, you've got an auto or day and night. So if you choose night, you're gonna see the screen going into a darker mode. Some people might appreciate having this on all the time. It's gonna be a little easier on your eyes and you can still navigate the system just fine. But if you want it to turn into that mode automatically, depending on the time of day, then you're gonna want it in auto. Under connectivity, this is how you're going to turn off the vehicle's built-in hotspot, as well as the connections to the cellular data and and a Wi-Fi connection so that you can actually connect this car to your home Wi-Fi and download updates. And actually, unless I'm mistaken, you're not getting a Wi-Fi hotspot. No, no, there it is, sorry. So vehicle hotspot actually isn't found in connectivity, strangely enough, it's over here under its own tile, vehicle hotspot. So if you wanna provide 
and pay for monthly a vehicle Wi-Fi hotspot for other devices in the car. You can manage that there. You could change the name and password of your Wi-Fi hotspot network. Continuing over to mobile apps, this is a pretty antiquated system. I don't understand why Sync still operates this way, but you can install applications on your phone and have them communicate through the through the system. I've owned multiple Ford vehicles and never used this once. I don't know why it still exists. Maybe if you use it, let me know in the comments. Software updates, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network and want to update the software here on the screen, you're going to choose that. I'll skip over Ford Assistant for the moment. Lastly, 911 Assist. You're going to want to have this on so if you have an accident, it's going to automatically call 911 for you. And lastly, a valet mode. You can put in a four-digit pin and disable elements of the car for if you're giving it to a valet. One thing I failed to mention at the beginning, but I suppose is decently important, is when you're on something like this media screen or settings or whatever, you do see a split screen layout. And this, you can swipe through and see kind of a persistent screen, whether it's navigation or your phone settings, your trip, or your fuel economy. And I believe, no, I guess you can't swipe that away, even though it's kind of movable there. It stays up in one spot. Below settings on the home screen, we have features. This is going to give you a few different features, if you will. So we have drive modes, sport, eco, and slippery and normal. You can also access those via a button down below here. Driver assistance, if you wanted to turn on or off some of your assistance, such as traction control, adaptive cruise control, you can actually change that to have it just be a normal cruise control if you don't like using adaptive. Predictive speed assist, this will actually slow the car down or speed it up based on the um, speed limit signs that it passes, you might want to have that on or off. And then lane centering, I think you can disable that from the steering wheel as well, but you can do that from the screen also. Down here under speed limit assist, you can set a warning to alert you if you're going too fast. Below that, under the lane keeping system, if you're someone who likes to change lanes without using your turn signal, then you might want to have this off because it's going to beep at you, or if you choose alert and aid, it's actually going to beep and nudge you back into the lane if you're departing your lane accidentally. Pre-collision assist, so this car will actually alert you and apply brakes if it detects that you're about to have a forward collision. You can turn that on or off there. I don't know why you would. Cross traffic alert, so as you're backing up, if there's a car coming by you, then you can turn that, uh, you can be alerted by that, and that's on by default. And then reverse brake assist as well. If it looks like you're about to back into something, it will apply the brakes for you. Over here under features, you see the power flow screen. This is going to show you what your powertrain's doing. Nifty for these hybrid powertrains. So you can see right now the engine is running, charging up the battery, and once the battery is charged up enough, it's going to shut back down. Unfortunately, I don't see a way to see your current charge level in the battery on this vehicle. It's kind of a bummer. I like to know, even though it's not a huge battery, I still like to know how much charge is in there. But I'm kind of an EV nerd. And then lastly, you can get to a built-in owner's manual here. Maybe if you need help figuring out a way to do something on this system, you can consult your owner's manual. Can we search for something like uh, fuel? If you need help fueling the car, what's that going to give you? Fuel gauge limitations, fuel economy, fuel tank capacity built in right there. That's nice to see. Except, is it actually telling me what it is? Advertised capacity. No. So it doesn't actually tell me what the advertised capacity is. <laughs> ah, that's that's pretty silly. Oh, right here we go. It's, it's lower. Fuel tank capacity. There it is. 14.2 gallons. Nice. Coming back to the home screen, we've got this apps menu, and that's almost showing you the same thing as we saw above in features. You got power flow, but then also the ability to get to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which we will do now. But we're going to go home first. A few different ways to get to Apple or Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, technically. If you're on the home screen, you can click this big box, but I appreciate that regardless of what screen you're on, you've got a hot button right there to get to it. This is how your Android Auto is going to look. You've got the split screen setup with Google Maps taking up most of the area and then a little bit on the side for your music. Opening up Google Maps, you can drag and drop around. Good refresh rate on here. Uh, resolution's a little low, but I think it's because I'm using my trap phone, not the main device. I think it needs some updates. YouTube Music over here on the right. That's what it's going to look like brought all the way up. You can access your different music from there. And your phone screen going to show you your contacts and give you the ability to dial a number right in there as well. Bringing you back home, you can click down here to get all of your different Android Auto applications. Okay, let me show you how to pair up a device. 
from the home screen, we're going to click over here on settings and then make sure we're swiped over to the left to get to phone list and add phone. Down here on my iPhone, I'm going to bring up the settings screen, click on Bluetooth, and then right now I see Ford Escape pop up. Click on that. Confirm that the pin display I'm going to hit yes on the, the screen and the pair device. on my phone. Allow anything that pops up on my phone screen and the car screen. For your safety, please stay alert to change and then it asks me if I'd voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Then it asks me if I'd like to use CarPlay on my phone. I hit yes. Enable it on the screen. And there we go, CarPlay coming up. Looking good, taking up again just this area of the screen. I can go to my app screen. Again, nice refresh rate, pretty impressed by that. Oh, the vehicle's going to shut off soon. There's that auto off coming in. Let's go to Google Maps. Again, with CarPlay, you can't drag around, you can't pinch and zoom. You gotta use these physical controls right there, or I should say kind of virtual buttons. Here's what your YouTube music's gonna look like after it loads up. Let's hit the super mix, see what we're getting on our now playing screen on the iPhone. Some Doja, Doja and the Weekend. Is that always how he spells his name or is that, it must be abbreviated, right? That's kind of funny. Going back home, let's take a quick look at your phone screen. You got your favorite contacts, the ability to get right to the keypad, view all your contacts, etc. Let's head back home and check out one last thing. Let's try out the voice commands. Now, I don't know, do we have, that? Do we have a hot word in here? Let's see. Yes, we do have the ability to turn on a wake word, so you can use OK Ford. Let's turn that on. Oh, you have some actually different options on the preferred wake word. These are your three different options. Four, rather. Four different options. <clears throat> OK Ford, what's the weather like today? All right. Please try again. What's the weather like today? Say something like, call John Smith, navigate to one American okay. in Dearborn, Michigan, the Sirius channel name, or FM 88.7. One sec, we need to turn off is advanced mode. That's going to make it go quicker, right? Yeah, fewer prompts. Okay. Can you really not ask things like weather? Hey, Ford. Okay, Ford. Weather. Please try again. Navigate to Starbucks. Please choose. One. Starting route to Starbucks. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. You can In also... 450 feet okay, make a U-turn if possible. You can also press this button on the steering wheel to get your voice commands. Cancel navigation. Canceling route. Hey Ford, okay Ford, set the temperature to 62 degrees. All right, so it did change it right there. So not the most advanced voice command system, but you can do some of your basic vehicle tasks. And if you wanna use your phone's voice command, like your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you can hold down this button. And then that brings up Siri right now because we're connected via Apple CarPlay. Or, yeah, Apple CarPlay. All right, so there it is, the Sync 4 system here in the updated Ford Escape. Did I answer all your questions? If you want to know anything more, throw it down in the comments below. I'll try to get to you. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.